Hi everybody, here we have another special game for you which is the Battle of Raffia which was fought between Alexander the Great's successors we'll be using Warhammer Historical Warhammer Ancient Battles second edition rules we'll also be using the Wargamer Ada Comp game system with Wargamer Ada Comp Digital Ancient Sets 2 this battle that you're looking at at the moment actually featured in the War Games Illustrated magazine June edition um, and in there there's a much more detailed write-up of the battle with who the players were who were playing the game there's also a history so that if you're not too up on this era of history you can find out what actually happened in the real battle and for those that want the orders of a battle they are actually in the article as well. We decided with this game that we weren't going to play a purely historical refight we decided to have a, a free setup which meant that each side was able to deploy their troops without the other side being able to see what was going on in a way this was going to try and introduce a little bit of variation hopefully in the uh, basic deployment but again both both sides decided to deploy their elephants in the center supported by their phalanxes which was slightly different from historical uh, deployment where the elephants were deployed slightly to to the flanks so it'll be interesting to see whose tactics will come out on top. At the start of the game, the forces under Antiochus have been quite aggressive. They sent forward their cavalry on both flanks of the battle um, and on their left flank with some quite clever manoeuvring. The commander on that flank was able to rout several of Ptolemy's uh, units and was throwing the whole of that flank into quite a lot of disorder. Antiochus himself charges straight into action on his right flank and manages to kill uh, the Galatian chieftain that we just saw um, which again on Ptolemy's left flank means that his troops there are being pushed back quite quickly and for the first couple of game turns everything seems to be going Antiochus's way um, even Ptolemy's elephants are being shot at by a fairly strong screen of skirmishers um, and several of the elephants are stampeding actually turning around and attacking their own troops which for this battle is quite a big feature because there are a lot of elephants involved as you can see here the uh, an overview of the entire battlefield elephants being quite powerful once they get into combat they're quite difficult to, to kill but if they do lose a combat they will stampede away which means that if they do then come into contact with your own troops they will fight you so a lot of the tactics that are being used here are going to have to be based around what these elephants are doing along the entire length of the table um, it's quite easy to find that you can suddenly be attacked in the rear or in the flank by an elephant from either side uh, they really not too choosy who they decide to attack um, here we can see some of the cavalry getting into combat taking on one of the phalanxes head on now after the first couple of game turns which purely went the way of Antiochus um, Ptolemy had to move out to the right flank to stabilize the situation there uh, otherwise there was a danger of his entire flank being uh, turned and on Ptolemy's left flank they had to 
really turn the flank inwards so that it had to stop Antiochus from being able to ride around the rear of their position. This had the effect that Antiochus found himself slightly isolated um, at one side of the battlefield um, as Ptolemy's forces over there then decided that they were going to target Antiochus and try and kill the unit that he was in uh, in an attempt to kill the leader. But being the army commander, as we can see him here, he simply decided to detach himself from the unit that he was attached to and rode away to join another unit, leaving the first cavalry unit completely to its own devices. Um, but then again, if you're the army commander, you can pretty much do what you like. The, the forces under Ptolemy, they managed to stabilize the position on the flanks and decide it's time to now get the main phalanxes forward and start attacking the opposition phalanxes, which then creates just one huge push and shove match in the middle of the battlefield. At the start of the game, the Seleucid forces had pretty much everything going their way, but the balance of power now beginning to swing back a little bit in the favour of Ptolemy's forces. Their phalanxes are now pushing the Seleucid phalanxes back, but their flanks are still quite vulnerable. They've lost quite a lot of cavalry and most of the skirmishers are now gone, so the Seleucids are fairly secure in having won the flanks but they're not really in a position to exploit it. Uh, Ptolemy's forces have maneuvered some forces into position to make sure that they don't get completely outflanked. The main focus of the battle now moves to what happens in the centre with the phalanxes and with the elephants still continuing to charge and stampede into different forces. Several phalanxes are being charged by one or more elephants, not always from the same side. Uh, you can quite easily find yourself being attacked by two elephants from both sides, which slows the combat down quite a lot. It's very dangerous just to sort of move off with uh, a huge game of elephant pinball going on really. Uh, the whole ground in the centre dominated by what's going on with the elephants. But as the game draws on a lot of the elephants are becoming exhausted and quite a few of them are beginning to to get killed which is making the movement and combat in the centre a little bit easier for the infantry units to move forward without worrying about being attacked by an elephant at some point. Ptolemy himself manages to get his heavy cavalry into position to get a, a perfect flank charge onto one of the Seleucid phalanxes in the centre of the battlefield. Usually ex you would expect this to be an easy win and cause chaos all the way down the line but unfortunately the heavy cavalry charge here spectacularly fails uh, much to the annoyance of the Ptolemaic players um, and here we can see Antiochus he's now got himself out of his predicament on the right flank and he's now busy trying to get himself back into the centre of the uh, his position because um, the phalanxes of Ptolemy are now beginning to push all the way back across the table and now have Antiochus's forces virtually back where they started and they're threatening a breakthrough in the middle so Antiochus is badly needed to help keep the line stabilized but the game has kind of dissolved into individual fights and brawls all over the table as sort of the cohesion begins to break up all along the line. Uh, both sides are 
desperately looking for a for a knockout punch somewhere but uh, nobody can quite make a decisive breakthrough and with Antiochus making it back to his central command position and with Ptolemy not quite able to make a, a decisive breakthrough we decided that because both armies are completely exhausted that the only fair result that we could come up with was a draw. Uh, I'd like to thank David Marks for hosting the game and I hope you agree it's an absolutely fantastic game to look at and I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as we all enjoyed playing the game and we'll see you again soon.